Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on back to the channel. As always, I hope that you're having a wonderful day out there wherever you may be. You could be on the east side, the west side, the north, or the south, or somewhere in the center of it all. Who knows? But thank you so much for being here. Spend some time with me, and some time we will spend as we listen to the next track on The Mask and the Mirror. We're going to listen to this track here. I'm not going to try and pronounce the, the name here, but it's also titled The Two Trees. I do see that the translating of uh, that beginning phrase there is who am I to bear it in Irish so that's what we're listening to <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to butcher it so I'm not even going to try uh but yeah it's going to be a nine minute track so let's just settle in settle down well you don't have to settle down but let's definitely settle in and we'll talk about the music after let's go ahead and get into it Especially that little note right there. This is a really cool opening and solo moment. I should really like that. strings to put you in. That's an intro, guys.
I feel like that's the type of track that I ruin it <laughs> by talking after. I, I, feel, I really feel like I'm ruining the atmosphere of this uh, by, by talking after, but talk I must and react I shall. <sighs> the opening is stunning. The whole track is stunning, but the opening is magnificent. I'm assuming it's the Illin pipes that are being played. Could be bagpipes, could be any other sort of pipes. All I know is that someone's getting piped. Someone's piping in the beginning of that track. And it is absolutely lovely. Um, now, I don't know which pipes it are. It is, but whatever type of pipe sound it is, bagpipes and the related are not always the most pleasant sound. But, I don't know about you, but I think a lot of us can agree that the way that it was played in the beginning was, it was so unique because it still kept, of course, the characteristics of the pipes, but... Some of the notes that were being played at certain instances just had this overwhelming beauty to it. It was very, very unique, and I thought that that was one of the standouts in this particular track. Then, of course, you have the bed of synth, not synths, but strings. I'm so used to thinking synths. <laughs> you have the bed of strings that begins her rise and fall, of course, amongst the piano and Miss McKenna's voice as she goes back and forth and sings this lovely folk song. One thing I, I noticed listening to this track that you get in a lot of tracks from her that we've listened to, but also just in a lot of string-based music, whether it's classical, symphonic, honestly, goes beyond that, is the breathing. The breathing of the music itself. You really feel it in tracks like this, where the strings, the singing, and the piano have this really nice dynamic where the music comes to a rise, like an intake and an inhale of breath, and then, not crescendos, but... There's a C word that's falling, but it <laughs> comes down to an exhale, letting that breath out, a rest, and that's where the music gets softer. I really like that, con that kind of volume dynamic because it adds to an emotional dynamic in the music. And like I said, you hear that in a lot of different types of music, especially when you uh, have strings, but I just found that that was very evident here. Now, I, I never, I don't think I ever looked up if Lorena actually plays piano or if she just sings. I actually don't. I don't even think I've ever looked because uh, <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna add to what I'm part of what I want to talk about. Um, so she does play piano, harp, and accordion. Now I can't say what she's playing here. I can assume that she's playing piano, so I'm gonna go with that assumption. Assuming that she's playing the piano here, one advantage that a singer has when they're playing the instrument alongside with themselves is that they control the breath, they control the power, and of course how that other that instrument that they're singing with expands or compresses whichever way so assuming that Lorena herself is playing piano here alongside while she's singing you can get a taste for that you can get a feel for that how she puts power into her hands and takes away power in her hands and same thing with her voice I think that you can hear that kind of unison harmony in the way that she's performing here and like I said the whole track has has this nice 
breathing technique throughout that I find very emotional. And this whole track also had a little bit of an air of melancholy to it as well, which kind of almost kind of gave me that little lump in my throat feeling a little bit, to be honest. Anyways. Beloved gazed in gaze in thine own heart. The holy tree is growing there. From joy, the holy branches start, and all the trembling flowers they bear. So we're talking about this, this tree inside, in thine own heart. The changing colors of its fruit have dowered the stars with merry light. The surety of its hidden root has planted quiet in the night. The shaking of its leafy head has given the waves their melody. And made my lips and music wed, murmuring a wizard song for thee. See, like, this inspiration for song and music, this joy. She says, uh, and made my lips and music wed. Like, made her combine music and singing with the emotions, the melodies, and everything. There the loves a circle go, the flaming circle of our days, gyring, spiring to and fro in those great ignorant leafy ways. Remembering all that shaken hair and how the winged sandals dart, thine eyes grow, ten grow full of tender care, beloved gaze in thine own heart. So I think that's that's what this whole track is kind of getting to. Now one thing I did want to see because I do see that I believe that this is a is it a folk song or let me see. It says lyrics by W.B. Yeats. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is actually a poem then. Um, let me see. I want to see if I can find that information just to make sure that I'm actually correct in stating that. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So off of a quick Google search. Okay, here we go. I think this might be it. Poem for the day. The Two Trees by William Butler Yeats. Yeats, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Yeah, so actually looking at it, because I found the poem, The Two Trees, it it's literally, the lyrics are directly, okay. So she really is singing directly the lyrics in the in the poem there. Okay, okay. Well, there you go. So let's type, let's see. The two, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. The Two Trees uh, by W.B. There we go. Because uh, I want to see if we can find perhaps the meaning directly of the poem. Uh, although a lot of poetry and stuff is, you know, up for your own interpretation. But I want to see if we can find that um, because that might help to give us some insight into the actual lyrics and what she's singing about here. Um, that's not it. Uh, what is the meaning? Of? Okay, according to the Eden myth, there are two trees in the garden, tree of knowledge and good and evil, tree of life. In this poem, Yeats, Yeats I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Yeats uses these two trees as symbols for the creative and mortal aspects of the human psyche. So that's where it's talking about, okay, the tree internal and giving voice. Okay, I, I can kind of see that. And that does make a lot more sense looking at that in comparison with the lyrics here, which are the same. But you know what I mean, the way that she's singing and what she's singing. Okay, okay, I get it a little bit. I get it. Either way, it's a beautiful song. <laughs> Either way, it's a great track. Let me know what you all thought of it. However, in the comments below, you can follow me in a few places. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed the music. Come on back tomorrow, and I'll see you all then, guys. Bye.